attempt to draw these women has proven difficult in the past. That is why I believe that another and a novel approach to dealing with the matter would be more prudent. Sarah Ajasafo will no longer hold herself out as Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection after President Ekufuado fired her on Thursday. A statement issued by the communications director, the president, Eugene Ahin, put to bed months of speculation and a groundswell of voices calling for her head. Mr. Speaker, this is the House of Records. And as the former deputy majority leader of this House, I was present in this House yesterday. But there has already been a slew of reactions, while some say her sacking is long overdue, Others feel she should have been given the benefit of a doubt. Here is Executive Director of the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs, Dr. Rashid Droman. The President has the power to appoint and he has the power to also remove. Um, he has taken that decision. Um, it's been long overdue. Uh, I don't want to get involved in the, in the argument of fairness or unfairness in terms of uh, whether she's a woman or she's not. It's a very important ministry um, and we need at all times for somebody to be manning that ministry. But one of the focal persons for the Fix the Country movement, Felicity Nelson, says the decision was to appease NPP foot soldiers who have long called for Adra Safo's head. I think this is very cosmetic. I don't think he's doing this to appease women or because he cares about the gender ministry. If anything, I think this is probably a, this is more political than anything as a way to kind of probably appease their own. Because if you if you really study what's happening, a lot of the backlash regarding um, Adwata for being away has been coming from NPP, like people who support NPP, NPP foot soldiers. They're the ones who have really been pushing this agenda about getting her sacked. If anything, this is really about appeasing the NPP foot soldiers as opposed to um, because he's um, dedicated to ensuring that he proves a lot for women and vulnerable members of society. NPP General Secretary for the Dom Kwabenya constituency, Theophilus Labi, says the president's decision is welcome. The president has been magnanimous enough. He has been so patient enough. We have all been generous with her, expecting her to have come back to her post and do what is expected of her. But if she doesn't want to do it, so be it. So if she, she says she should go, now I think it's in the right direction. I don't think um, we can blame the president because he's the only person who can hire and fire. For now, Sanitation Minister Cecilia Dapa is acting as caretaker minister for gender, children and social protection until a substantive minister is nominated. But the Dom Kwabenya MP will hang on to her role as Member of Parliament at least until October 10 when the Speaker will deliver a ruling on the Privileges Committee report on her long absence from the House without permission. But what do we know about the fired Gender Minister Sarah Adra Safo? Let's quickly run by you some of the interesting and memorable timelines uh, when she was at the helm. So we remember she was vetted sometime February 18, 2021, where she promised to use her Office of Gender, Children and Social Protection to deal with child trafficking. That was a key, one of the key, you know, pronouncements she made on that day. That same day, she also promised to rebrand witch camps uh, in this country when approved as minister. Of course, you remember that that generated such a storm on social media. And then fast forward, May 19, 2021, she wrote a letter sacking the school feeding program boss Getrude Kwashi Ga. And that also generated a lot of controversy. And a couple of days after that, that decision was reversed. So on 21st of May, the decision was reversed. And so Getrude Kwashi Ga was brought back according to a statement signed by Sarah Jassafo. It was a technical error which led to that earlier letter sacking the school feeding program boss. And sometime in June, she took a break. And on August 31, 2021, the leave period she requested from President Tekufado elapsed. And on October 6, 2021, President Tekufado extended her leave indefinitely. And in that letter announcing this, he announced the Sanitation Minister Cecilia Dapa as caretaker minister. Then this year, March 3, 2022, the minister requested again for another four-week extension to her leave to attend to some personal issues with family and her children. So on the 6th of May, the minister spoke from her base in the United States of America on her long absence.
touching on a number of issues that she has not abandoned her ministry, neither has she abandoned her constituents of Dom Kwabinya. Then on July 18, 2022, which was just around the time the NPP was holding their National Delegates Conference, she wrote a statement on her social media handles alleging political witch hunt by some leading members of the NPP and her colleagues in Parliament. So that is what we know about the former gender minister, now, you know, sacked by President Tekufa, Sarah Ajoa Safo. Let's get on to Zoom now. I speak to Jonathan Asante Otri. He's a senior lecturer, University of Cape Coast. Thank you for joining us, sir. So some have said that this decision long overdue because for a very long time, the sensitive ministry as the Gender, Children and Social Protection Ministry was orphaned because there was no, if you like, figurehead leading the ministry. But would that be accurate then? Because there are other, you know, officials, the chief director is there. There are other officials of a ministry who could have been running the ministry without necessarily Sadra Safo's presence there. Uh, let me say good afternoon to our viewers. I think uh, uh, you, you rightly premised your question. Um, Yes, there are other substantive, you know, uh, people in that particular ministry holding substantive positions, as it were. And so, but we still have to have our minister because there are certain things that obviously, certain thresholds that are obviously beyond the chief director or even, or even probably the critical minister may not be able to take such a decision. That's the more reason why it is always important that you have a substantive minister who be liaising directly with the president at that point, too, as it were. Mm. No. But unfortunately, yeah. No, I, I was just going to ask then because we also know that her portfolio was key because she was a cabinet minister. How did it either, you know, affect government business to the extent that the president is now taking that decision to let her go? Well, I think that um, the president probably, you know, the vice president and other cabinet ministers may be covering for her, as it were. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very important ministry. Um, and so for, for some of us, it was quite surprising that all this while the president had to leave that particular position vacant, and especially being a cabinet member for that matter. But of course, you, the president most probably wanted to treat the issue with that kind of human face because the woman, you know, uh, appropriately sought permission from the president. Uh, and the president, after some few months, said that, you know, the woman is, is likely to go for an extended kind of leave. So the president is privy to the condition of the woman. But it is just unfortunate that it took a little too long. And as a nation, that is high origin, as it were, in terms of debt and debt service and interest rate and other things, uh, it is quite prudent that the president had to relieve her uh, for economic and financial reasons, not to waste about that. What are the dynamics that are going to play out going forward now? Because now we have her fate as an MP also hanging in the balance. The speaker has deferred judgment or ruling on that to sometime in October. Her constituents are literally calling for her head. If you were to advise Adwa Safo in the circumstance we find ourselves, what, what should she be doing? Well, I think that she, she must organize herself, her thought, and marshal the, 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 all the ammunitions at her disposal to be able to secure a defense of herself and an opportunity to be had. Uh, she should be able to give you know, tangible or reasonable reasons, as it were, for her absence and for her inability to appear as it were, at the Privileges Committee. And based upon that, maybe the Speaker or the Chairman of the Privileges Committee and the members of that particular committee will give her the opportunity because the point is that whether the Regional Minister of Canada Japan, they all infringe the standing orders of Parliament. So if they have been able to give reasons because they called and they were already here and they attended, we just cannot also condemn her for her absence. I think that um, we have given her ample time. Okay. It is not easy to go through primaries and win elections. As far as our, 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 our the conduct of elections in this country are concerned, it is not easy. And so we just cannot, in, in a simple just word of, uh, in a simple manner, say that she does not deserve to be the, a, a, a parliamentarian of that particular constituency. Okay. As for the ministerial portfolio, 
the appointor has decided, and I think that is in order. Okay. The embassy, her constituent gave her that mandate, and I think that they must give her that opportunity to be heard. And I'm quite impressed by the statement of the, of, of the speaker. I think he acted maturely, and as it were, uh, his position is beyond partisanship. And that is something that I love my heart of, you know, for him. Okay. Okay. Because it is quite surprising that you have the majority today you know, routing against her and the minority for her. And the dynamics there, should she even lose that particular seat, the MPP shouldn't think that they are going to win that seat. I think that it is much more dangerous to the health of the party in government to keep her than to ask her out. Okay, thank you very much. Jonathan Asante Otre there, he is a senior lecturer in University of Cape Coast speaking to us. Uh, so the coming months, three or so months, will be crucial for Sarah Adwa Safo as the speaker prepares to, you know, give that ruling on the Privileges Committee report on the absenteeism that has been spoken about. Whether or not she keeps her seat as the MP for the area remains to be seen. We'll keep our eyes on that. You want to stay with us. You're still watching Midday Live from the News Hub here at Adesawi Kanda in Accra. We have more stories. Please don't go away.